Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we have a, a huge group of, I think, about three or four people, um, but we're very glad that you're here. Um, and as I think I mentioned the last time around, uh, our lab sessions are really not uh, structured or formal in any way. Uh, I don't have anything prepared to, uh, to present to you. I'm perfectly happy to, uh, I, there's plenty of things that I can show you and just sort of go wherever it takes us. Uh, if you like, but really what I'm most interested in is uh, is how you're faring so far with the homework assignments, whether you were able to communicate with your team, create an account, put anything on your user page. Uh, I've been watching that a little bit on Wikipedia and I've, I've seen that there's been some good updates uh, to the team page, but uh, I would be very interested to hear from either any, any of you uh, about where you're at so far. Um, so is there anyone who's able to give us a little update? or has a question that they need answered? Uh, what to write on your user page? Yes. So um, I, I really uh, rushed through things a great deal last time, so I realized I didn't, didn't present that at all. Um, I'm going to go straight to uh, screen sharing so that I can demonstrate a few user pages to you. And actually, this time, for this purpose, I am going to use a different kind of screen sharing than I did the last time. Um, which is the, uh, I'm going to use the web tour feature, which it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to see the screen scrolling around as I scroll it, but it's going to be much faster and um, it's going to load up much faster for you guys. So um, I'm going to just pull this up now. And so basically the way that this works, um, it's just pulling the same web page into each of our windows, so you can scroll on your end wherever you like within the page, and it's just going to follow whatever um, whatever page I take you to. So I, I think we should just take a look at a few different user pages, and I'll kind of I'll I'll point some things out as we go along. Um, but the 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 very basic answer, I guess, before I get started with that, is that. Um, I, I really, I would just suggest that you put in a sentence or two about who you are and why you're interested in Wikipedia. Maybe what you do for work. Um, people have very different ideas of how much, uh, how public they want to be about themselves on Wikipedia. Uh, personally, I am completely, you know, I use my real name as my username, and uh, I, I like it that way. I like um, sort of being able to credit, take credit for the work that I do on Wikipedia and. just not worry about what people do or don't know about what I've done there. Um, but other people really like to keep that private and, you know, maybe they like to work on um, topics that, uh, you know, they don't really want associated with their public, uh, like their, their sort of work persona and things like that. Um, oh, I see. Do, you, do I suggest including an email address? No, I, I don't. Um, it, the people will be able to in email you through a form. Um, on your user page, and I can I can show you how that works. I actually did a screencast uh, earlier today uh, to show that so that you can get in touch with your team. But um, putting your email address on your on your Wikipedia page or really on any public web page um, is just sort of an invitation for it to be harvested by spam bots, by by you know automatic computer programs that collect email addresses to send out spam messages about you know selling things and. Um, and stuff like that. So I, I really would not suggest you put your email address, but um, if you have a web page already, if you have like a, a LinkedIn profile or your own website, or you know if you're a, maybe if you're a professor, you might have a, a home page on your university's website. You might want to put a link to something like that. Um, but let's let's take a look at a few examples. So I'll just pull mine up first. Um, because I know what's there. <laughs> uh, so I have quite a lot of stuff on my user page. And I think this is going to give you an idea of sort of the, the blend that, that people will create um, of uh, sort of things that are, are sort of public facing, that are explaining who they are and what they're interested in, and things that are just sort of useful to themselves. So I've put in, uh, uh, not too many people really put in as extensive of a sort of a biography as I have here. Um, I've done this really because of the core of my, my work and my sort of public, um, publicly known persona, I guess, is around Wikipedia. So it's important to me to, um, to sort of tell people what my connection to Wikipedia is. Um, 
I've, I've put a little, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, the, there's an Aaron Swartz memorial box I put up that a, a friend of mine had put up, and I just put a copy on mine as well. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with uh, with Aaron Swartz, but he's uh, a, a, a pretty well-known Wikipedian and uh, internet um, sort of guru that we lost uh, a few months ago. Um, so that's just something I wanted to, to put out there. Um, and then below that, I have a section on what I've done on Wikipedia. And this is oh, sort of perpetually out of date, but it does have links to uh, several of the articles that I'm proudest of that I've worked on. On the right-hand side, you'll see um, a couple of sort of informal awards uh, that people, well, the first one is uh, is one of the few sort of awards that you give to yourself. And it's actually closely related to the uh, the WikiSue Burba badge, the, the badge that we give out uh, to people who successfully complete the final assignment here. Uh, welcome back, Christine. We're just talking about user pages. Um, and so this is this basically is something, if I click through to this where it says Veteran Editor 4, it would um, give you uh, a description of what the criteria are for that. And it's a certain number of edits or changes to Wikipedia articles in a certain amount of time. So uh, in this case, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like 15,000 or something edits over five or six years. I don't remember the exact numbers, but um, so I just put that on my own page. And then below that, there's one that someone else gave me um, where it says, I award this barn star to Pete for his great efforts improving Wiki Project Oregon. Um, so that's something that I uh, am very proud of as this comes from another editor that I have a lot of respect for, and it meant a lot to me that he um, that he recognized my work. So I was happy to keep that there. And then I've listed several articles that I have worked on or that I'm interested in continuing to work on and just put a few notes around that. If you scroll a little further down the page, uh, there's, there's some photos that I've uploaded. And then below that, we start to get into things. There's a section called Some Wiki Tricks. Um, and resources and stuff to do. And these, we're sort of gradually getting into a zone where it's really more notes that I'm keeping for myself about things that I'm interested in working on. And uh, you, you'll find that people, um, people kind of tend to do that. They just sort of park things on their home page that they're interested in, that maybe other people they work with might be interested in as well. But there's a real sort of blending between what you're consciously trying to present for other people um, versus what you're interested in for yourself. Um, at the very top, um, you'll see a string of, of stars and uh, green circles. Each one of those links to an article that I've worked on to get to featured article status, which is not something that I talked about the other day, but that's the peer review process that determines what articles are considered good enough to go on the front page of Wikipedia. So I've worked on several of those. And not every one of them is uh, actually with the featured articles. I'd say most of those are probably articles where I, I worked with other people. I supported other people's efforts to, um, to get an article to featured status. Uh, but then the green ones, the good articles, those are mostly articles that I worked on pr prim primarily myself. Uh, and then below that, you see a bar that's a notice of paid work relating to Wikipedia. And that's a box that you can expand or collapse. Yeah, uh, Sarah asks, are people following where I am on the page? And I am jumping around pretty quickly. so. Um, yes, Christine, I think you, you missed what I mentioned. This, I'm using a different kind of um, web tour than I did before. Uh, this is um, this is going to be a lot snappier on your end, but it basically is just loading the same page into your browser and you can scroll. So I'm trying to, de to describe where I'm, I'm scrolling to. And I'm, I'm hoping that people are keeping up with me, but I should probably be checking in a little more. Um, and yes, we will come back to uh, uh, your question in, in just a second, Christine. Thanks for that. Uh, so I'm, I'm at the top of the page. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you on my page is this um, notice of paid work relating to Wikipedia. If you click on the Show button on the right-hand side of that, it's going to open up a box. Uh, you won't see a whole lot of this, but this is something I do since I, I do a lot of consulting around Wikipedia. and. Um, Conflicts of interest where people are paid for their work on Wikipedia are, of course, a, uh, a sensitive topic. And so I try to be very clear and upfront about what I do and how I'm approaching it. Um, EJ, do you have a question about how the stars are created? And um, yes, this is something that I have put there myself. And uh, I'm going uh, to click on Edit. I'm going to show you 
really, I mean, this is this is rather complex stuff for, you know, I don't expect you to sort of uh, get why it works this way yet, but just to give you sort of a general idea, all this code at the top of the edit screen is the stuff that pulls in the stars. And so on each line you'll see two squiggly brackets and FA star user page. So that much of it is what pulls in the image of the star and puts it in that place on the page. Um, and then after that you'll see the name of the article. And so that's what makes the star link to the place where uh, where I would get to it. So this is, yeah, as Sarah has said in the chat window, this is pretty um, pretty esoteric stuff. And uh, you know, even even by the time you finish this class, you might not be uh, you know doing stuff like this. Uh, there are other ways to, and, and and if you ever want to know how to do this yourself, it's the sort of thing that someone else can do for you. Other people can edit your user page um, just like you can. Uh, you of course don't have to accept things that other people might put there, and it's not common that people will put things on your user page, but. If you want help putting something on your own user page, uh, it is pretty common to just ask someone else and they might just put it there for you. So anyway, this is, yep. Yeah, can I just jump in for a sec? Yep. Um, I like to always point out that I, uh, frequently if I like, if I like what I see on someone else's page, I just hit edit to look and see how they did what have and then I'll open another browser showing the finished product and I'll just compare them side by side. And I don't I don't really have a programming background. I just can I can just look at the code and look at the finished product and copy and paste what I what I want to use. And so frequently when people see the code for the first or second or third or twenty fifth time <laughs> it can look really daunting but you don't actually have to have any programming background at all. Right. Very good point. So really the idea of a wiki is, um, you know, originally, and this is before Wikipedia, um, but back in about 1995, I think was when wikis were invented, and the whole idea of it was that it was a way to construct web pages with code that is similar to HTML, but is simplified in a way that it's easier for people to read it. Now this, what we're looking at right now is not a great example of that, because this is a place where uh, people have really stretched the code to, you know, to do something that it really wasn't originally meant to do. Um, this, uh, uh, you know, creating these stars up here is that's just kind of a weird thing for a wiki page and it's, uh, people get sort of creative um, in, with things like that. But let's take a look at another page and, let, and let's um, walk through that, uh, what Sarah was just talking about. So I'm going to go to, uh, Sarah, do you want, should we look at your user page? Is that a good one to? I haven't looked at your sure, or if, if you want to just look at a very basic one, I like to just pull up Beck Pits because it's so basic that it just okay. gives people a real sense of what it might be useful to, to just add for your first few sentences if you don't have much wiki experience. Perfect. Excellent example. So this is much more what I have in mind for uh, for students to put on their page. And uh, EJ, if I... Uh, it, it could be that what I just showed you was pretty intimidating. <laughs> um, as, as far as your assignment of just putting something up, this is much, much closer to what I have in mind, which is just to put up a couple of few sentences. You know, this is even more than, than you need to put up. Um, just plain English. You can see she's put in one link to uh, a research pro project that she works on. Welcome, Clem. Uh, we're just taking a look at user pages. Uh, EJ had asked uh, what you guys are expected to put on your user page in the initial assignment. So we just took a look at a um, at, at my user page, which is pretty detailed, and now we're looking at a second one, which is much simpler. So, um, and Sarah was just describing how she would go about if, if so, uh, EJ, let's just suppose that you're going to set up your user page for the first time, and you like what you see. Um, Oh yes, absolutely. You can include that you're taking the class. That's a that's a perfect thing to put on there. Um, so if you want, if you saw what she had done here, and you wanted to put something similar on your page, all you'd have to do is click the edit button at the top of the screen, and that's going to show you the page with the code. The code looks, you know, because it's basically just plain text. This looks almost identical to what we saw before, except for the link. So you see on the second line. Uh, you see the HTTP, um, and so in that line, 
there is um, there 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 are a few a few things to to look at to notice how the the code is formatted, and um, the basically the the single it, everything that's between a single square bracket. Uh, as long as it starts with a valid URL with something that starts with HTTP, uh, is going to be a link to a web web page outside of Wikipedia. So you, if you have a single bracket and an HTTP and the, the whole URL, and then you put a space, and then you put some more text and close the bracket, then that will show up the way that we just saw it. So the um, The text that you put after the URL is what's going to show up on the page, and the URL is what it's going to link to. So back to our example, uh, EJ, if you wanted to, to do something similar, you could just, and you know, maybe there, maybe let's just imagine a case where she might have some very light formatting here. Maybe she has a bullet list of a few websites um, that she's worked on, or there's some bold or italics or something like that. You could just click edit and then copy all of this code, copy everything in that edit window. And then don't save anything. Just hit the back button, or uh, or scroll down and hit cancel, and go to your own user page. And then you can paste that in and alter it however you want to before you hit the save button. Uh, you can also use the show preview button to get an idea of what it looks like before you save. And then uh, when you're satisfied with how that's coming out, you just hit save, and there you go. You'll have your user page. So does that give you a bit more of an idea? And would it? Uh, I see Christine has pasted a link. Oh, good. Uh, Christine has pasted a link to the the guideline on user pages, which is a good good thing to look at, <laughs> and an excellent quote there. Um, let me pull up just one more. Um, uh, just because this is one that I remember as being a pretty good one. Uh, so. Uh, this is Sage Ross is a, a friend and colleague. He's actually someone who uh, participated in one of our webinars in the last time that we ran this class. Uh, and as you can see, he's he's put a little bit more formatting on his page than I did. He he's created this nice uh, box with a border that sort of gives it its own look. Uh, he's put a couple of images in. Uh, his his intro looks kind of similar to mine. Uh, and then as you scroll down, you're going to see. Uh, something called uh, below the photo of him. There's a series of rectangles. These are known as user boxes, and this can be uh, really a, a fun way to get started with Wikipedia. People uh, create and share these uh, little bits of code that uh, express something about themselves. So, uh, in his case, he says he's proud to be an American. Sometimes uh, he's a member of the History of Science Wiki project. So we haven't gotten into wiki projects yet, but they're basically uh, collections of pages that help Wikipedians with similar interests uh, coordinate their work on a topic. Uh, so he's listed a few wiki projects that he's a member of. Um, uh, further down, it says this user is a historian, and things like that. Um, so if you're looking around at other people's user pages and you see one of these and you say, "Oh, that's you know." That applies to me too. You know, this this person uh, says he trains bonsai. Well, I do that too. Uh, all you have to do is click on edit on their page. Uh, if there if it's in a section, you might want to click the the section edit link to find the piece a little more quickly. Uh, once you have the page open, you might want to do a find uh, within your web browser. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of text there and you're having trouble finding it, but if for the example I just picked, this user uh, likes to grow bonsai. You might just do, uh, you know, Control F and type in bonsai, and that would jump you down to the the part of the the page where you'll see something between squiggly brackets um, that says something about bonsai. And if you copy that from the the two squiggly brackets at the beginning to the two squiggly brackets at the end, and copy that and put that on your own uh, user page, then you're going to have the same user box. Okay, so EJ, you have, that's a, a great follow up there. So yes, yeah, so like every page on Wikipedia, this is actually one of the big innovations of Wikipedia as opposed to previous wikis that were not designed to be an encyclopedia. Every page has a corresponding talk page. So if you look in the upper left hand corner, uh, 
we see it says user page here. If we were looking at a Wikipedia article, it would say article in the upper left. And then just to the right of that, it will always say talk. So um, the, uh, the uh, John, I'm going to get to your question in a sec. Um, so uh, essentially with the, with the user page, the user, the user page itself is more or less uh, is, is sort of a static page. I mean, you can change it anytime you want to, but it's, it's more or something that you're just presenting for other people to, uh, to see who you are. And like I said before, maybe park some information that's useful to yourself. Uh, but then the talk page is something that's specifically intended for back and forth communication. So if we click on Sage's talk page, um, and, and if you scroll down, uh, you're going to see a lot of notifications that are sort of automatic. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the Wikipedia signpost is a weekly um, basically newsletter about Wikipedia. So uh, if you subscribe to that, it'll send you a notification every time there's a new issue. Uh, but then you'll also see notes from people that, that people have left for him, and sometimes those will grow into, into an entire discussion on his user talk page. So if you want to leave a message for another user, like uh, maybe someone on your team, or maybe like me or Sarah, uh, the best way to do that is to, uh, is to find their page. So I'm going to just type in, I, uh, I'm going to go to our, um, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to go to our main page and then the team page. So uh, let's see. So here's our our main course page, and then I'm going to click on the teams page. So uh, if we scroll down here, I'm going to choose. Uh, let's see. What 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 group is someone in? Give me a team number or a team name. Okay, so EJ, you're in team four. So I see you have, uh, let's say if you wanted to leave a note for Clem, uh, you would scroll down here and where it puts his, um, right below his name, it, there's a link to talk and then to his contributions. And if you click on talk in parentheses there, that's his talk page, his user talk page. So if we click on that, uh, you'll see that someone has welcomed him already to Wikipedia. And then if you wanted to leave him a new note, you would click the new section button in the, in the top toolbar. And when you click new section, that's going to give you a, um, a form where you can put in a subject or headline. And then you can leave your note. And then scroll down and uh, click the save page button. And, uh, and when you do this, uh, every time you, uh, you leave a note, when you're in the, the talk namespace, when you're leaving a message for someone, you always want to sign it. So at the end of what you type, uh, you want to just click the little squig the, there's a picture of a, a pen or a pencil and a little squiggle like, like someone's writing. It's the third icon from the left next to the bold and italics icons in the, in the toolbar at the top of that window. So if you click that, it's going to put in the code that automatically puts in your signature and a timestamp. Uh, which is just, uh, it's four, four squiggly marks, four tildes, uh, and actually two regular dashes before that, which are, which are optional. So um, I see we had a question from John, what is all this strange language? And I think uh, you are asking, what, is, what are the weird codes that we've been looking at? Uh, is that right, the, like when I'm in these edit screens, John? Okay, so uh, I'm really glad you guys are asking about this um, because it's as as we had to compress so much logistic information into the first class, introducing you to this is really the main thing that uh, that that suffered. So um, uh, let's see. I I'm going to uh, if, Clem, if you don't mind, I'm just going to stay here and use your page as an example. Um, when when you edit Wikipedia, in general, you um, you you don't get to edit in a way that's like what you see is what you get. Um, I, I don't, John. I don't know if you've ever uh, worked with HTML at all, uh, which is the the code that creates web pages. Um, but uh, you know, basically, you you need to explicitly tell the software when you want to make something italics, when you want to make it bold, when you want to create a bullet list, and things like that. It's not point and click the way that something like Microsoft Word would be. 
Um, and the reasons for that are extensive. It's unfortunate that it's not, and there are major efforts to uh, to improve it so that it's much more like that. But it's a it's a complicated task to do. And um, and uh, oh, okay, yes. So Clem, you're asking a great question, and that's going to be a, a perfect example for this. So I'm going to click the edit button here. Uh, so Clem is is noting that the uh, the link he put in for the Wikipedia articles, the basics and beyond class um, is showing up as an external link instead of an internal link. And I, I think what you're probably noticing that shows that is uh, because it's a slightly lighter shade of blue than an internal link, and it has this padlock at the end of it. Uh, so those would be clues that it's basically showing up as though you'd link to any external website as opposed to another Wikipedia article. So this is fine, and it'll work. Um, but if you want to make that uh, an internal link, which would be sort of the, the more proper way to do it, you would use a different kind of code. And you know what? I'm going to switch the, um, as I'm giving examples, I'm going to switch to the other kind of browsing so you can actually see what I'm typing in the edit window. So give me just a moment to do that. Okay, and it's, uh, I believe it's, is it CCLEM? Am I remembering that right? No. Let me go back to my... Uh, C01CLEM, okay. User colon C01CLEM. There we go. So, uh, I'm going to click Edit here, and I'm going to just show you. So, in this, in this, oh, whoops, I'm... Okay, I need to log out of my main account. <laughs> I'll be right back to this. I'll log into my demo account. I have some. Uh, I have my my preferences set in a way that makes things show up differently for me than it might for you. And I can show you some of that if you're curious. Um, so, I'm going to just put in an extra couple of returns here so that we can see the part that is making it a link. So this line that I have, that, that full line is the thing that creates the link. So the, um, as I described before, we have the single uh, square bracket. And that's the single brackets is the main thing that makes it an external link instead of internal. And then we have the URL. Um, oh, interesting. OK. So uh, this actually, this link, I think, was going to be a bit broken. And I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. So there, there. Are, so I, I'm going to fix this. So that you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you why it's broken. Um, if you, yeah, let's see. So if you were to click on this, can you see at the bottom of my screen where at the very end of the URL it has a percent symbol and it says percent seven C writing. Um, if the so the the name of this link is supposed to be writing Wikipedia articles, not just Wikipedia articles. So it's actually taken the first word of the the text that we want to be part of the uh, the text that's displayed and put that into the URL. So if we click on it, I don't know if it'll work or not. Yeah, see, it didn't it didn't work. It was confused about what we were trying to do. So. Um, so I'm going to show, I'm going to go back into the uh, the edit screen. So I'm clicking edit source to show the, this this code, and the and I'm going to separate this out again because I didn't save that. Okay. So as we're looking at this line, the, the proper way to do an external link would be to have a space instead of a vertical bar. So you had a vertical bar here, and what we run is a space. And so because that was a vertical bar, it was considering this to be part of the URL. And then it was looking to the first space and considering everything after that to be the text you wanted to display. So this is a this is a really annoying and confusing distinction. With an external link, the space is the thing that distinguishes the address from the text. And with an internal link, we will have uh, double brackets. And then you don't have a full URL. You just would put the the title of the Wikipedia page, so that's this much. So I'm going to copy that and paste. 
Uh, an internal link, it doesn't matter whether it has underscores or spaces. So we would, with all these spaces, we would be able to turn those into spaces. And so you can probably see why those, uh, the, the spaces and the vertical bar are kind of an issue here. So this doesn't matter within an internal link. It's, it, it's, it's fine for it to be underscores. And then the way that you would distinguish it is a vertical bar. For an internal link, it is a vertical bar. And then we would type in, write in Wikipedia articles and close the double brackets. So I'm going to click Show Preview. And so because I put uh, two carriage returns between, you see those are showing up on different lines. But the first one, that shows you how the external link shows up. You see it's a slightly different color, and it has that, uh, that padlock icon or an external link icon next to it. And then the internal link shows up more or less the same, but without that extra icon. So, and yes, Christine is pointing out that the padlock indicates it's using a secure HTTPS protocol. If it wasn't um, HTTPS, here, I'll show you that. I'll just take the S out but because with Wikipedia, the links are the same, with or without. And I'm going to do the preview again. And this will show you the other external link icon that will show up, which is this little box with an arrow in it, which I think it's supposed to mean it's pointing you, it's showing you that it's pointing you to a separate site. So, OK, so Clem, you said you tried adding a link using the add link icon and copied and pasted the URL from the browser. So yes, uh, it, it's, it's, this is absolutely the sort of thing that is frustrating and annoying about editing Wikipedia. Um, I think you'll find uh, that you pretty quickly pick up on the common bits of code as far as internal and external links. Uh, you know, bold, italics, bullet lists, and things like that. Uh, there's also a level where you just will always have to look things up and copy from other pages and things. I mean, I've been very actively editing wikis uh, since the early 2000s, and there's still things that I, you know, I don't remember, and there's not necessarily great documentation on it. Often, the best way to learn is what Sarah was describing before, is just to go to a page where something exists that looks similar to what you're trying to do, copy the code, and just think it through. Uh, you know, look for the elements that are what you're trying to preserve, and replace the elements that are, that are different, and experiment. So that's where the uh, the show preview button is always going to be your best friend uh, when you're you know if you're not sure if you got the code right and you want to take a look at it before you save it you can always click this show preview and also while you're in the window you can uh, you could click on show changes which will uh, get on the left it'll show you what it looked like before you made your changes and on the right uh, what your changes were that can be useful if you've tried a bunch of things and you don't really remember exactly what you've changed in the window. Uh, and you want to double check before you save it. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I wasn't scrolled in the window. So, Christine has put another useful link, thank you, uh, to the editing guide. Um, let me just jump in and say I'm, I belatedly did start taking notes in our Etherpad, and I'll paste the link into our chat box if anyone wants to um, help take notes or refer back to it later for, for the links. Great, thank you. And I see Cami has just joined us. Welcome, Cami. So, uh, so Cami, we have, uh, let's see, what have we covered so far? We we started off with the, no, it's, it's not a problem that you're late. It's, uh, these lab sessions are very informal, so um, it's great that you came at all. Um, and, you know, it, we, we basically just take any questions or take the conversation uh, wherever it takes us. You're emailing your teammates, that's great. So um, the things that we've covered so far are uh, EJ had asked us about user pages and what, uh, what we're expecting you to put on your user pages. I'm going to just really very briefly go back to that. Um, we found an example of a very simple uh, user page that's a good example, uh, which is Beck Pitt. Uh, Beck is someone that Sarah and I met at a conference that we were at recently. Um, and so this is a good example of the kind of thing that I'm hoping that you'll all do when you start your user page. User pages can, can get very, very complicated. Um, but this is the 
uh, you know, just putting in a couple of sentences about yourself, maybe a link to a website uh, that's important to you is really all you need to worry about. Uh, and when you want to start this, the, the best way to, um, you, you might want to, if, if, you, if you see formatting like the, the link that she's got here and you want to know how to do that, you can click on edit source, uh, which will let you see the code that allowed her to create that. And then you can generally copy and paste that and then start experimenting with changing it around on your own page. And uh, so we were just talking about how that's a, a very useful way to learn wiki code is to copy bits of formatting from one page and try them on another. So that's more or less what we've covered so far. Uh, Cami, if you have any specific questions that you're bringing, please let us know. Um, or anyone else. If there's any uh, questions or ideas or confusions, if something about the, the homework didn't make any sense, now's your chance to ask about it. Also, if you just if you found an interesting Wikipedia article or something that uh, that you want to share with us, that's great too. Uh, cheat sheet in the reading. So um, yes, so that that's. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. So this is a, a page on Wikipedia that shows you the uh, the codes for some of the common bits of formatting that you'll want to use on a wiki page. And so you see, there's three columns here. The left hand column describes it, italics, bold, and both. Um, link to another page. So this this is a lot of these first few lines are just the stuff that we were just talking about. And then the second column shows you what the code is. And the third column shows you what comes out. So if we were just to look at uh, the, the, the second line here where it's linked to another page. So this is an internal link. You see they're using the double square brackets. Um, and you can see that uh, when when they put copy edit, in between double brackets, it turns into a link to the Wikipedia article entitled Copy Edit. Uh, they also show you that if you want to uh, easily link to that page but change the basically change the tense of it or make something plural or something like that, you can just run some extra letters right up against the end and it will still preserve that as a link, um, but it will go to the page on Copy Edit. Uh, then the next line shows you what I was demonstrating about how you would change the text um, so Android operating system is where we want to go, but in the text of the article we just want to say Android, so the way you do that is by sticking a vertical bar in the middle. And if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to come to external links, so link a website. So that's the other thing that we were talking about here, and actually this, this line here is the one, that's the kind of example we were looking at. So you can see there are a few different ways to do it, these, these three lines here that, that describe three different ways to do it. So hopefully that's something that will help you to uh, to add some formatting into your user page. So anyone else with a question or an idea? Um, I think what I'll do, this is something that I'm going to cover in the, uh, actually, uh, before I go on, John, uh, if you're listening, I want to be sure that um, that my answer to your question was useful to you. I think um, if you've never encountered wiki code before at all, uh, this can be a very, uh, it's like we're throwing you into the deep end. So uh, if you want a little bit more uh, discussion around the, the codes and, and how they come together to build wiki pages, I'd be happy to talk about that. Uh, so it looks like John's typing. EJ, what's the difference between notes, which I mentioned at the lecture, and references on the cheat sheet? Um, that's actually, th those, those phrases can be used rather in, in interchangeably uh, in Wikipedia articles. That's a, a good example of, uh, there, there are lots of, places in, in, in Wikipedia where it's been sort of established that rather than try to set the one 
correct way to do it and 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 everything else is wrong um, we sort of let people do whatever they prefer within um, within certain parameters so actually a good example of that is uh, British versus versus English spelling so like the word color in British spelling has a U in it and in uh, American spelling does not uh, so with things like that we would just have endless battles if we tried to uh, decide that one was right and one was wrong. Um, so instead, there's basically a rule that says whoever started an article uh, should generally get to determine whether it's going to be British spelling or American spelling. Uh, and other people who don't like it should just kind of accept it as that person's right to, uh, to have determined it. Um, there, you know, in a few cases where it's something that's very specifically of England versus something of the US, um, that will that will sort of override it. So if it's an article about an American president, uh, it would make a lot more sense to use American spelling than English than British English spelling. But, so there, you'll find lots of little examples like that. And the references versus notes is one of them. They're, they're basically the same thing. You'll see footnotes, notes, references, citations. References, I think, is the most common one, but, um, but they basically all mean the same thing. Uh, and John, okay, so the cheat sheet seems good enough. Good. I'm, I'm glad that's pointing you in the right direction. We're going to have lots of questions about this throughout the class. So um, uh, if you if you run into something that you so the, the the best approach is always to try to figure something out yourself. And like I said, find another page that does it in a similar way, and see if you can copy the formatting. But if you're stumped, uh, that's a good time to leave a note on our class talk page or. Uh, you know, wait for one of the lab sessions or something like that, and we'll try to set you straight. Uh, and we have a new student. Welcome, Jay Roxy Chicks. So, uh, just to catch you up on where we are, I'm I'm uh, rapidly learning uh, how little guidance I gave you all on how to start your user page. and how to deal with wiki code. So we're just doing some sort of remedial um, talk about how that stuff works. Um, and I think, uh, I think at this point, rather than reviewing it again, uh, you're, of course, welcome to uh, watch the archive of this. Uh, and I think, I think it's going to turn out to be a rather useful one, which we should have posted uh, within the next 12 hours or so to the class page. Um, but something I'd like, uh, I guess, unless anyone has a specific question at this point, um, I'd like to go into showing you how the, is the history screen works. Um, this is something I'm going to cover again on Tuesday, on our Tuesday-Wednesday class session. Uh, but uh, it might help those of you who are here now to see it twice, because um, sometimes this, it's, it, there's a lot of information in this. And um, if it's coming at you a second time when you come to class, They'll probably sink in a little better. So welcome, FEP Proctor. FE Proctor. Um, so I'm going to show you how the history screen works. So let's just. So here we are on the cheat sheet, um, which, uh, for those that are just joining us, this is a good place to find uh, the wiki codes for um, for making certain kinds of formatting. And let's just look at the history of this sheet itself, this page itself. So in the upper right, next to the search bar, you're going to see this View History tab. And if I click on that, we're going to see a whole mess of code. So uh, before I get into any details, I'll, uh, I'll give you a, a general idea of what we're looking at here. Every single page on Wikipedia, whether it's a Wikipedia article, or a user page, or a user talk page, or like this, a, uh, a help page, is going to keep a record of every revision that's been made to the page going back to when it was started. So starting here about the middle of my screen, every line indicates one revision, with the most recent one being up at the top. So, and I'm going to skip. I'm going to, I'm going to start uh, describing those to you, I'll, and I'll come back to what's at the top of the page afterwards. So. Uh, on each line, I'm going to go from, from left to right. I'm going to start with this date stamp. So the date stamp, obviously that's the time of day and the date when that, that change was made. Uh, you see it's in 24-hour time format. And actually, it's, um, it's generally going to be in universal time code, which is more or less Greenwich Mean Time. Um, 
If you set your time zone in your preferences, it will show your actual local time. I think, I actually feel like this that doesn't work entirely consistently in all screens, uh, but, uh, but it's something you can play with. I actually, I'm, I'm so used to sort of looking at things in universal time code that I, I, I don't really think about that too much. Um, but if you click on that, where it uh, where it shows you the time and date, that's going to take you to the version of the, the page as it was at that time. So we just looked at the current version of the cheat sheet, but if we're curious, what did it look like in on February 11th? And we just click on this link and it's going to take us to the version of the cheat sheet from that time. I'm not seeing any obvious differences, uh, but you know, in some cases it's going to be a, a huge difference, especially when an article is brand new and people are rapidly adding new things to it. Um, actually, just to give us an idea, I'm going to go back to November and uh, I'm guessing that, so uh, you might remember as we were looking at this a moment ago, the, uh, well, you see that it goes right into images here very early on and those were not at the top before. Uh, and actually here where it had links to, the, the example was the Android operating system and here it's showing name of page. So it was giving sort of a generic name of page link before. So you can see how this, this page has changed over time. Um, so anyway, going uh, left to right, so the next thing that you see is the username of the person who made that change. So in this case it's Frungi. Uh, that's the username that's going to link to his or her user page. And then it gives you these, uh, hopefully familiar now, you may remember seeing this on our, our team page. It's going to show you the links to that person's user talk page and to his or her contributions. So if we can click on contribs, we're going to see a screen that looks very similar to this, but instead of all being about one page, it's going to be that person's edits to whatever many different pages he or she has worked on. Um, but it's the same concept. It'll have one line for every, every change uh, and you'll be able to see what they've been working on. Uh, next to that, we have a couple of pieces that show you how the size of the page uh, in the in the English language or actually using the, the Latin alphabet um, where it says bytes that more or less ends up corresponding to a letter. So this 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 is telling us that the entire page consisted of 9,700 letters at that time. Uh, and then next to that it's minus 454. So this edit removed 454 letters from the article. So it's where it's read and with a negative sign, and with a minus sign, that's uh, generally it's removing content. You'll see it's bold when it's a bigger change. Uh, and then when it's green, that person has added content. And we're going to come back. That'll make a little bit more sense when I, when I wrap this up. The next bit is uh, one of the most important pieces here. This is uh, as you've seen in the uh, in the edit screens, there's always an edit summary box, and that's a place where you describe what it is that you've done. And the reason why it's so important to always edit, add an edit summary is because it shows up in screens like this. So as we're reviewing this and trying to get a sense of what has driven the evolution of the cheat sheet page, we can quickly look through and see what is it that people are trying to do. So this person has said he's removing the recommendation of using VT semicolon and wiki markup for non-index headers. Okay, so this is rather technical. I don't know exactly what this means. Um, but if you were worried about that kind of technical stuff, this would probably make sense to you. Um, you'll find that people use some kinds of shorthand. So I don't know what this means here. IW provided by Wikidata. Um, you know, we're looking at a help page, so this might not be the, if we were looking at an article, it would probably be say, saying things like added a citation or fixed a typo. Um, so you wouldn't, it's, it's not usually this technical, but sometimes it is. Uh, and then you see as we go down further, some of these don't have an edit summary at all. So uh, if we're trying to figure out what BIOS Mars did here or Super Juju, we have no idea. So it's, this is why it's always a good idea to put in an edit summary, even if all you're doing is fixing a little typo. If you say that that's what you're doing, it's going to help other people understand what you're doing and work with you more, uh, more readily. Um, finally, there's this link to undo. And so uh, it's always possible to undo someone else's edit. And uh, it's, it's always safe to click on this because there's still a save screen before you get to anything. So 
the undo button actually doesn't often doesn't work on the older ones. It doesn't. The software doesn't really know how to handle when uh, when a number of changes have been made in between. But on this top line, just say we wanted to undo the most recent edit, we could just click undo. Uh, it's going to show us a screen. We're going to come. We're going to look at this screen again in a moment. On the left-hand side is the before. So this is what it currently is. And my text is the after on the right. So this is showing me what it is going to do to the page if I undo it. It's going to remove all of this code that this person added in. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. It's going to add back in all of this code that the person had removed. Uh, and then it shows me the, the what will be the current code for the page at that time. So if this is exactly what I wanted to do, I would just scroll down. It's going to pre-fill that edit summary for me and say undid this revision number by this person. But then at the end of that, I might want to say, um, actually, that was important to the end. Um, so you can always add on to the, even when you're undoing something, you can explain why you're undoing it. And then if I were to click Save Page, that edit summary would show up in the, the History tab. And, um, and then we would have a new line in the History tab as well. I'm not going to save it right now because that would be obnoxious. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, me undoing it or him doing it, none of that is, uh, is permanently obliterating what came before. It's always possible to go back to an earlier revision. Um, so let me. I'm going to click back on our history screen and check in our chat window. Um, oh, Christine, we have missed your. Yeah, I think Christine, I have a question about team pages. Yes. I'm afraid we've missed it. It's on our talk page. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Christine, why don't I? Um, I'm going to just quickly wrap up what I was looking at, and then we'll come back to that. I'm very sorry, I, I lost track of that. Um, so, uh, so let's see. So we covered the date stamp onto the end of the line. Uh, so on the left hand side, the stuff I skipped before, this current, previous, and the buttons. These these first three columns are all for comparing two revisions of the page. So let's look at the buttons first. Let's say that I was interested in what this person, Biosmurs, uh, did in this series of edits where no one else edited in between. I'm going to click on the button from before he made those edits. Uh, I'm actually saying he because I happen to know this is a guy. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to click on the most recent edit that he made. So you see, uh, so before his, his first edit and then up to his most recent edit. And then I'm going to click Compare Selected Revisions. So this is going to show me, similar to what we just looked at, on the left-hand side, the most, uh, the most current version before he started editing by Super Juju. Uh, it tells us who the most recent editor was and lets us contact them if we want to. And then as you scroll down, on the left-hand column, this is what was there. And then in the right-hand column, this is what it looks like as of Biosmore's uh, several edits. And then you can see on each line, it's highlighting the pieces that he added or removed. So here he's, he's changed the code in that shortcut. And this is all very code heavy stuff. Uh, it, you could probably look at an example that's more just basic text and it would look a little less confusing. Um, but we'll do that in class uh, on Tuesday so you'll get a better look at this. Anyway, uh, just, to, just to wrap this up, uh, so that's how you use the buttons. And then current and previous are just special cases of that. So current is always going to compare that line that it's on with the current revision of the article. And previous is always going to show you just what that one line did. So it's going to compare it to the one immediately previous to it. So uh, Christine, I'm going to come back and let's let's talk about team pages. Um, so I've lost my window. There we go. So no, you, uh, you're really not getting ahead. This is actually one of the most important things because it was a big part of the homework and you really want people to get connected in their teams today. So wow, <laughs> connection by mobile phone, impressive. I hope this is useful for you. Um, so do you have a specific question about the team page or do you want me to just jump in and start looking at it, Christine?
navigating to get to it. So uh, I think Christine might have stepped away for a sec. Um, I guess I'll just go back through what the idea of the team page is. Um, Peter, she, she uh, did yeah. post her question on our talk oh, page. If you if you want me to read it, but oh, it answering do. it when she's not answering when she's not here might not be the most productive for her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, she'll she be able to. Okay. And anyone will be able no, to. Let me just that. read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Her question was: Might it be useful to create team pages under the? Well, here I'm just going to paste it for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Might it be useful to create team pages under the Wikipedia Wiki2 Teams path? Oh, I see. Um, you know, I think Christine, this is a this is an interesting idea, and I think we should discuss it. But let's do that after the lab is over, because I think this might be confusing to our students. Uh, we should I think that uh, you know we should really decide on one way of doing it and um, and present something clear to them. So I'm I'm reluctant to change that, but you're right. I mean I see the sense in what you're talking about. Um, so let's let's try to if if you're available uh, in like 10, 15 minutes, let's just uh, let's just talk about it then. Um, so we are reaching the end of the hour that we have for the lab session. Uh, if anyone else has further questions, I am certainly available to to stay a little bit later. Oh yes, EJ, do you have a question about the sandbox? Uh, yeah, so the sand, the sandbox, the way that we've described it, is a part of your own user space. It's something that other people can see. Um, oh, John, I'm sorry, I must have missed a question from you too. So I'll, I'm going to come right back to that. Uh, so uh, the sandbox. Uh, at, at the at the top, where you see sandbox in the in the very top line of your screen, if you click on sandbox, that's allowing you to create a page that is essentially your own. Um, so you see, mine says this is a test edit. It has a banner across the top that describes this is my sandbox, but it is publicly visible. Other people can see it, so you don't want to put anything here that's super private. But generally, what people will use this for is if they're drafting an article, and it might be. You know, a few days or a week or or, or a long time before they before they feel like it's really ready to post as a Wikipedia article, they'll do it here, uh, and they might even ask other people to come look at it and help them out with it, make edits to it. Um, but it's basically their space. So it, you know, if I'm working on an article about um, you know, say a, 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 a scholar that I'm interested in, and uh, I ask Sarah to come and look at it, if she has a suggestion for it. I might just undo the suggestion that she made, and as long as it's in my sandbox, it's basically my, you know, it's basically my say. It's uh, I've asked her for her input, uh, and that may be helpful or may not be helpful, and I may say no. I'd rather I'm trying to take this in a different direction. Um, now you will find that people occasionally refer to a general sandbox, and I this I, I just mentioned this so that you know it's available. I really don't think it's very useful. Um, but before these user sandboxes existed, so a couple of few years ago, um, there was this general sandbox, and it still exists, where um, this, is, this is a shared sandbox where anyone can edit it, and it just gets uh, cleaned up every, I don't know, every few minutes or every couple of hours. It gets set back to nothing. And so it's possible to use this, but it's not very useful because uh, someone might just change what you do, you know, a couple of sentences, a couple of seconds after you do it, uh, with tens of thousands of people editing Wikipedia all over the world. So uh, really, your own sandbox is the much more useful feature. And when we talk about a sandbox, that's what we're referring to. So John, let's see, did we figure out what John's? Okay, how about a page that tells how much homework and extra credit people have completed? So yeah, um, so the the general idea here is that your um, that your team are the main people that you'll be communicating with about that. So when you're when you've been working on your um, your homework, uh, you should send a note to your teammates 
to let them know what you've done uh, or questions about what you've done or, or I, something cool and interesting that you've run across in the process of doing your homework. We are not tracking uh, the homework very closely. It's the homework, the, the week to week homework is generally for you to be able to track your own progress. If there's something that you find in there that you don't feel is going to be useful to you, just don't do it. It's not that's, that's not a problem. But we do encourage you to, uh, especially the ones that have you editing Wikipedia articles, um, to do as much as you can. Uh, because the more you the more you practice and the more you work on articles, uh, the better feel you're going to get for it. Um, there is a final project that we're going to in introduce in detail. I think in the third week, uh, and that is something that uh, that you'll be you'll basically be working on a single article uh, over several weeks. And that's the one that we will uh, look at if and when you submit it at the end of the course to, to uh, determine whether you've earned the badge associated with the class. And also just even, even if, um, I, I should say right now, the, uh, the, uh, I think the, the badge requirements may be a little bit ambitious. This is the second time we're running this class. Um, and it may be that, uh, that we've set the bar a little bit high. So even if you don't uh, get an article to a point where you feel like it is really, uh, you know, should be submitted for the badge, still submit it to us and, and let us know and we're very happy to give you feedback on it. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, that I, I think what you're probably seeing in my answer right now is that this course itself is a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, and so we're, we're in a learning process about what works best for, uh, for teaching you guys. So uh, we're, I'm, I'm very open to, to feedback on what's working and what's not working, and we'll try to make adjustments uh, if necessary throughout the class. Uh, looks like there's maybe another question in here. I'm going to just try to scroll back and see. Uh, John, I, I, I hope that made sense to you. Maybe give me a, give me a message of <laughs> whether that makes sense or if you have any follow-ups. Um, we were also... Um, talking about the issue of whether it's appropriate to use HTML and how much HTML and other, you know, web web um, languages that would work in Wiki Markup and whether it's okay to use them. Yep. Yeah, I'm just finding that. So um, there are some HTML codes that work and some HTML codes that don't. Uh, there's really never any harm in trying it. So if you know HTML and you don't know how to format something in Wiki Markup. Um, it's definitely an option for you. I would encourage you to try to use the Wiki Markup as much as you can. If you're familiar with Wiki Markup or with HTML, you're going to find pretty quickly uh, that HTML that Wiki Markup is is very closely based in it, and you're going to start to see patterns uh, of how things work that is very clearly derived from the way that HTML works. So it should be a pretty easy learning curve for you. Um, if you do put if if you put HTML code into a Wikipedia article uh, and it works and it and it accomplishes the kind of formatting that you're looking for, uh, don't be at all surprised if someone comes along and changes it into wiki code. So uh, it's it's not a problem for you to do that. It's it's perfectly fine. But other people will probably come along and say, uh, you know, it's going to make a little bit more sense to other new users as they come along to see things encoded the same way. So they'll just uh, clean up and and sort of tidy up what you're doing. And then you can learn from what they do. Uh, often one of the best ways to learn about uh, wiki code is by doing something that's almost right and then seeing how someone else fixes it and go back and look at those, uh, those the, the edit history and the diff screens that I showed you um, to see what the changes were that they made. Someone or some bot, yes. <laughs> we haven't talked about bots yet, but um, there are all kinds of automatic scripts and bots uh, that make edits to that make automated edits to Wikipedia, doing things like like uh, fixing common typos and uh, archiving pages on a regular basis and things like that. All right, John, I'm, I'm glad that addressed your question. Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> um, do you have any more questions? I'm I'm happy to take one or two more, but uh, if not. I'd also be kind of happy to wrap up.
Okay. <laughs> Spinning bots. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, <laughs> thanks, Christine. Great. I'm really yeah, glad this helped. Yeah. I think you, you deserve to take the night off. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much. All right, well, so uh, I do actually, as a parting note, um, remember to check back on the uh, on our course's talk page. So if you're on Wikipedia and type into the search bar, just WT colon Wikisu, all caps, that's always going to take you to our course talk page. And you're going to see that um, there's been a lot of stuff added since the last class. So this is always a great place for you to post a question uh, or something interesting new that you've learned. Uh, and also, it's a good place for you to come and see what other people are talking about. Actually, there's uh, a couple of things I want to point out really quickly. Um, we did get a comment requesting that the archive session be posted in a more open format, uh, and I, I did that. It was a little time consuming, but I think it's worth it. I, I managed to post it to YouTube, so I'm going to try to do that for every one of our classes. Those might get posted a little bit later because it takes some time to, uh, to encode it and upcode, upload it to YouTube. But if you're having any trouble with this Blackboard Collaborate software, uh, that might be a better option for you. And then another thing is uh, one of our students, uh, Grandma Lori, was having a little trouble figuring out how to get in touch with her uh, classmates, her teammates. So in answer to that, I posted a short instructional video that you'll see linked here under the Accounts tab. And that goes through some of the things. I think we covered them pretty well in the lab here. But if you need a refresher on how to use it, uh, how to email someone else or how to post to a talk page, that might be helpful for you. Also, we have uh, a couple of students who are uh, endeavoring, to, who are Spanish speakers, who are trying to take our class, and so they've formed a specifically Spanish-speaking team. So I'm pretty excited about that, and I hope that uh, there's. I think there's two of them now. I see Christine has jumped in and and maybe is able to speak Spanish as well. So hopefully we'll get a, a bit of a Spanish focus there. And if you speak Spanish, you might want to jump into that team or just. Uh, jump in and, and help out that team in addition to your own as the course goes on. Anyway, um, I think that's all. So, uh, okay, Christine. Um, Christine, I think if you if you want to jump on Skype, I think we have each other's Skype addresses. So uh, maybe we can just use Skype to get in touch in a couple minutes. Okay. So thanks everyone for showing up, and I'm gonna. Log out.